Yo, what's up guys? It's Noah here, uh, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking through the NBA slate on DraftKings for uh, Monday, April the 17th. We have a two-game slate for Monday. Uh, we got Game 2 of the Nets and Sixers series, and then we have Game 2 of the Warriors and Kings series. So, uh, two-game slate, guys. We're going to go game by game. We're going to talk through each one of these two games since, you know, it is a small slate today. This will probably be, you know, sort of a quicker video, but still want to give you guys a breakdown of the slate, what I do like taking a first look on Sunday night. Um, but as always, before we do get started with the breakdown, if you guys do enjoy uh, these DFS videos and if they do help you out, make sure you hit that like button down below. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you have not yet. And if you guys are new to the channel, if you have never checked out Price Picks before, Price Picks is the sponsor of this video. Um, you guys can actually sign up for Price Picks and use my promo code, promo code NOAH. When you sign up, you'll get your first deposit matched up to $100 when you sign up with my promo code. And for those of you that have never heard about Prize Picks, they are a player prop site. Uh, very simple, very easy to use. You're just taking more or less on a player's projection. It's as simple as that. Um, you have to make at least two picks, but you can make up to six picks and you can win up to 25X your money on Prize Picks. They do already have uh, props posted for Monday's games. They even have some props up for, for Tuesday's games as well. You can take a look at the board, see all that's available, all the props they have available. Again, you're just you know, taking more or less on a projection. Um, but if you guys want to check out Prize Picks, again, make sure when you sign up, use that promo code NOAH. You will get your first deposit matched up to $100. But uh, let's go ahead and talk through these two games for Monday night. We'll start off with the first game of the night, the Nets and the Sixers. So we'll start off on the Philadelphia side. Looking at the Sixers here, you know, I think this spot's pretty good for Philadelphia in general. We did see Philadelphia put up a good amount of points when these teams played on game one. It was kind of a it was kind of a you know beat down. I mean, Philadelphia won that game very handily. They won by 20 points. They they put up 121 points as a team. Joel Embiid didn't have to do too much. You know, he got a lot of contrib the, the Sixers got a lot of contributions from some of their other guys, from Harden, from from Tobias Harris. Embiid did not have the greatest game in game one, but I think Embiid is still a very strong payup option. Obviously, on a two-game slate, you know, Embiid's going to stand out as a top play. The only issue, and it's kind of been the issue for a lot of these short slates, is that there just really hasn't been much value. Um, and it, you know, during the playoffs, you're not really going to get much value unless, you know, guys get injured or something. So it's going to be hard to pay up for Embiid, but I still think he is a really strong pay up option. There's really nothing negative you can say about him. I will say that when I was watching that game, um, the game once uh, game, I think it was on you know Saturday. I'm pretty sure they were double teaming Embiid a lot. Um, the, the Nets were so it, you know if they're going to continue to double team Embiid like that. You know maybe it'll it'll be a little bit tougher for him to have a huge huge game. But I mean we know Embiid has massive upside. And he's clearly a guy you can pay up for on this slate. James Harden at 9K I think's fine as well. Harden was you know really good. Had 23 and 13, 52 drafting points. Played huge minutes. We know the minutes are going to be through the roof as long as the game is competitive. He did lose a little bit of minutes last game because of blowout. But even you know, with the blowout, he still played 36 minutes. There's a good chance if this game's competitive, we're going to get like 40 minutes from James Harden. Um, he's a little bit easier to get to because he is coming in a, you know, a lot cheaper than Joel Embiid. I think Harden is fine to go to at 9K. Don't think I would play Harden and Embiid together. Um, you maybe could do it on a two-game slate, but I don't know if I'd do that personally. I feel like those guys kind of eat into each other's upside. Um, but I think Harden at 9K looks very solid. And then the rest of the Sixers, you know, guys like Tobias Harris and Tyrese Maxey, it's hard to get excited about these guys. The only reason I, I will say that they're playable is just because it is a two-game slate. We just don't really have that many options. But Maxi and Harris just hasn't haven't really shown consistent upside when they're playing with Embiid, when they're playing with Harden. A lot of Maxi's best games this season have come whenever you know Embiid's been out or Harden's been out or they've both been out. It's 6700 You're kind of paying the, the full price for Maxi right now, so... Not in love with Maxi on the slate. Tobias Harris is 6K. I think it's like he's playable. He did have a pretty solid game in only 29 minutes in game one. He did put up 35 drafting points. The 6K price tag on Harris, I think, is a little bit more reasonable. Um, so I don't mind going to Tobias Harris here. The rest of the Philadelphia guys, though, like the bench guys, eh. the only thing I'll say is like, you know, even though this is the playoffs, this is a series that I think Philadelphia is probably going to win pretty easily. And we kind of already saw in game one, Philadelphia won, you know, pretty easily. I could definitely see, you know, some of the maybe one of these bench guys like getting extended just because it could this could be a blowout. I mean the spread I think is double digits right now. I think Philadelphia I think it's favored by like ten and a half here. So maybe if you want to take a shot on a bench guy and hope they get extended in a potential maybe if it's a blowout like D'Anthony Melton last game did play twenty two minutes. D'Anthony Melton is a pretty good per minute producer. He probably gets like twenty minutes regardless of if it's a blowout or not. Maybe if it does wind up being a blowout, he gets extended a little bit. So I think Melton's a, a GBP dart throw. I think another guy you could definitely take a shot on is Paul Reed. Uh, we did see Paul Reed last game play 13 minutes. He basically got all the backup center minutes. 
in a scenario where Philadelphia wins this game big, you know, maybe Joel Embiid only plays like 28 minutes or something, you could definitely see Paul Reed get extended in a potential blowout. And, and if this game does wind up being a blowout, you know, on a two-game slate, if Paul Reed puts up 24 DraftKings points in 15 minutes, which he's totally capable of doing, if he does that, I mean, there's a chance he could be in the winning lineup. You know, you're not going to see a ton of cheap guys do really well just because none of these cheap guys project that well. But um, I, I definitely think playing for a blowout here is something you could do, and which is crazy to say for a playoff game, playing for a blowout. But again, I think Philadelphia, you know, you look at the spread, it's a 10.5 point spread. Philadelphia, you know, should win this one pretty easily. But let's talk about the Brooklyn side now. And, and looking at Brooklyn here, Mikael Bridges had a really big game, um, you know, did a lot of scoring, had 30 points, 39 draftings points. He had a big first half, kind of cooled off a little bit in the second half, but you know, Bridges is going to be the number one option on offense for this Nets team. I don't think the matchup against Philadelphia is that great. Philadelphia's defense has been really good this season. Philadelphia plays at a really slow pace. Bridges, though, um, you know, he's going to play huge minutes here if the game's close. He did lose minutes last game due to blowout. I think he subbed out with like five minutes left in the fourth quarter, so he was on pace to play about 40 minutes have the game been competitive. If this game does wind up being competitive, you should get about 40 minutes from Mikael Bridges. So I think it's 7,700. He is fine to go to. I think Spencer Dinwiddie at 7,200 is a playable option as well. Slightly prefer Bridges over him, but I mean, we saw last game Dinwiddie play 36 minutes, even with the blowout. His minutes are going to be through the roof. He's been playing a ton of minutes. So uh, Dinwiddie is a playable option too. And then the rest of the Brooklyn guys, you know, Nick Claxton, don't think it's the greatest spot for Nick Claxton. Um, he only put up 25 DK points in 30 minutes last game. There's obviously some foul trouble risk guarding Joel Embiid. You know, the Sixers have been a pretty good, you know, defensive team against centers. This this is not a matchup I really like to target. So at 6,600, Claxton on a two-game slate is still a fine option, but I would definitely put him in the category with like Maxi and Harris. Not guys that I would really be like prioritizing. Cam Johnson at 5,800. Going to play probably you know low to mid-30s minutes. At 5,800, I think he feels priced about right. He's an okay play, but you know outside of Bridges and, and Dinwiddie, I'm not really that excited about anyone else on Brooklyn. Um, you know, Royce O'Neal got some run off the bench last game, 28 minutes. Royce O'Neal, not the best permanent producer, but he does seem to have a pretty, you know, even though he's coming off the bench, he's it seems like he's going to play you know, pretty decent minutes regardless. Like he's going to play 26, 28 minutes. There really isn't any value on this slate. So if you do want to take a shot on Royce O'Neal coming off the bench as a value play, I don't think it's bad. Like, I think he's a fine option. But again, that's probably it for Brooklyn. Nothing else looks that great here. So let's move on to the next game. Talk about Golden State and Sacramento. This game was really fun. You know, game one of the series. It was a really close game. It was a really high-scoring game as well. I think we're going to see this, you know, this series in general be very high-scoring. Both these teams, the Warriors and the Kings, like to push the pace. You know, the Warriors defense has been really bad on the road this season. The Kings offense has been great at home. So looking at, you know, Sacramento first, you got DeMontis Sabonis coming in at 9,300. You got De'Aaron Fox coming in at 8,500. I like both both the price tags on these Kings guys. You know, we haven't really seen Sabonis in the low 9K range in a long, long time. I mean, you look at his game log. Last time he was below 10K was, you know, March the 13th. It's been over a month since he was below 10K. So I think Sabonis at 9,300 looks really good here. I know the matchup against Golden State might not be the best. We've seen Golden State do a pretty good job limiting opposing centers this season, but Sabonis is going to play huge minutes. He's a guy that can stuff the stat sheet. I think at 9,300, he looks like a really good play today. Definitely one of the better payup options on the slate. And then De'Aaron Fox had a huge game last game, 38 points, 53 DraftKings points, played 40 minutes. At 8,500, I think Fox is firmly in play here. We know Fox tends to do really well in fast-paced games. This should obviously be a very fast-paced, high-scoring game. We saw you know, 126, 123 final score in Game 1. Wouldn't be surprised if you see you know, another really high-scoring game like that. So Fox at 8,500, I think, looks really solid. And then the rest of Sacramento, just because it is a two-game slate, I think we're going to have to look to guys like Harrison Barnes and Malik Monk and Kevin Herter. I normally don't get excited about these Kings guys, but again, we just don't really have that much, you know, that many options to work with. Harrison Barnes played, you know, 36 minutes last game, was pretty solid, had 31 DK points. I have a good feeling, you know, that Harrison Barnes is going to be pretty chalky today. Um, he's not a guy that I really ever get excited to roster, but he's going to play a lot, and he is really cheap, and there's really no value on the slate. So I definitely think Harrison Barnes is going to project as a pretty solid, like, just cheap forward option. He's definitely in play. He's probably going to be popular, but I think it's fine to go there. Malik Monk played a lot off the bench last game, 29 minutes, had 32 points. He was, you know, knocking down a ton of shots, 8 for 13 from the field. He went to the free throw line 14 times, made all of his free throws. He did get a, a lot of minutes over uh, Keegan Murray last game. 
don't know if that's something that we can expect to happen every game. Like, I don't know. Like, I think last game, Keegan Murray played like 16 minutes or something. Um, let me pull him up. He, I think he played 16 minutes. Yeah, he played 16 minutes last game. Don't know if we can expect Keegan Murray to only play 16 minutes, but if, you know, if Monk does get a lot of run off the bench, it's probably coming at the expense of Keegan Murray. Monk is one of these guys that can definitely produce when he does get minutes. Um, and again, like a fast-paced game like this, I think sets up really well for him. So I'm fine with Monk at 5,100. Kevin Herter, I'm not as excited about, but I think at 5K, he is a fine option. He did play 31 minutes last game. Didn't have the greatest game overall. Also shot the ball very poorly. But again, you know, fast-paced game like this. There's plenty of upside for Kevin Herter if he can knock down some shots here. The minutes should be pretty secure for him. At 5K, he is, you know, a fine option. The rest of Sacramento, though, I don't see too much else I really like here. Again, Keegan Murray only played 16 minutes last game. Does that happen again? I would say probably not. I think most nights Keegan Murray plays like mid-20s to, to low-30s in minutes. So at 4,600, he's an okay value play. A little bit riskier just because, you know, again, he only played 16 minutes last game. But I think he's fine to go to. We did see Trey Lyles come off the bench, do pretty well in limited minutes. Had 27 DK points in only 18 minutes. He is really, really cheap. And again, we just don't have any value like below 4K on this slate. If you want to take a shot on Trey Lyles, I think it's okay. He's a guy that I definitely wouldn't be like run into roster. I mean, he did kind of have like best case scenario, 27 DK points in 18 minutes is definitely like, you know, outperforming his normal production. But if he does get like 20 minutes again, I mean, at 3,900, he could still pay off this price tag. And again, there's just no value. So Trey Lyles is okay. Not a guy that I would be like running to roster though. N no other Kings though stand out to me. I think that's pretty much it for Sacramento. So let's talk about the other side of this game now with Golden State and looking at the Warriors here. We do have some injury news to monitor here. Uh, Jordan Poole is listed as questionable for this game. I think it's pretty likely Jordan Poole plays here. I would be very surprised um, if he winds up sitting this playoff game. Um, that injury that he suffered, I'm, I didn't get to see it. Like, I don't know if it was like a bad injury or anything, but I'd expect Poole to play. If Poole doesn't play, that would probably mean like more minutes for maybe a guy like Dante DiVincenzo, maybe more minutes for guys like Gary Payton. I think both DiVincenzo and Gary Payton would be really good value plays if Jordan Poole got ruled out, but I think for now we have to assume Poole is playing. We'll start off at the top, though, with the, you know, the main Golden State guys. So you got Steph Curry coming in at 9,600. Curry did not have the greatest game in Game 1 of this series. He did score 30 points, but didn't contribute too much else with any, you know, any other peripherals. Just had six rebounds, just had two assists, no defensive stats. Look, Curry, you know, he's going to go out there and you know, play huge minutes. He's going to chuck when he's out there. You have to look at him as a whole, though, when you compare him to the other studs on this slate, Joel Embiid, DeMontis Sabonis, De'Aaron Fox. I think I would probably put Curry... I think I would put Curry behind Sabonis. I think you get a little bit of a higher floor from Sabonis. I think Curry probably offers a higher ceiling, though, just because we know Curry can go out there and put up, like, 50 points any game. Um, but with, with Sabonis' ability to rebound, to get assists, just to do everything when he's out there, I feel like his floor is a little bit higher than Steph's. But I think Steph is obviously someone you can look to pay up for on a two-game slate. Wouldn't consider him a, a priority, though. Clay Thompson at 6,900 as a mid-range option I think is solid. Clay played 37 minutes last game, was really productive. Um, you know, you're going to see a, a lot of ownership. I wouldn't say, you know, at this point in DFS, but you tend to see, you know, because it is like the same matchup over and over, you tend to see the guys that do well, did well the game before, get a little bit more ownership the next day. So like, because Clay Thompson had a really good game um, in, in game one of this series, maybe he gets a little bit more ownership today. I definitely think the $6,900 salary is a little bit too low for Clay here. Um, and again, there's just not much value on this slate. So you're going to be looking to like a lot of these 7K, 6K guys, and obviously Clay kind of fits that build. So Clay is a fine mid-range play. I think Draymond's a, a solid mid-range play as well. Draymond, you know, again, one of these guys that just does everything when he's on the floor. He only scored four points last game and still put up 36 DraftKings points because he had nine points. He had 11, or he had nine rebounds, 11 assists, one block, two steals. Um, minutes weren't as high as I would like to see. He only played 33 minutes. Normally, I would want to see Draymond playing like 36, 37, 38 minutes. So that's a little concerning is that his minutes weren't like super extended even in a playoff game, but I'd assume Draymond sees more than 33 minutes most nights, you know, in the postseason. And at 6,100, you know, this is a price tag Draymond can easily outperform in a fast-paced game environment, you know, like this one. So Draymond, really solid mid-range play. Now, Andrew Wiggins, I'm a little bit skeptical on. So the report last game was that Wiggins was going to come off the bench and play like mid-20s minutes. I think they said like 24 to 25 minutes or something like that, or 20 to 25 minutes. So Wiggins came off the bench, played, he was supposed to be limited to 20 to 25 minutes. He wound up playing 28 minutes. He looked really good, though, um, you know, after being out for over two months. He came out there, was aggressive, took 16 shots. Look, Wiggins is a you know decent permanent producer. I would... 
I'm definitely going to be interested to see if he, if he comes off the bench again or if they move him into the starting lineup. If they move him into the starting lineup, that makes me assume that he's going to play close to normal minutes. If he, if he comes off the bench again, that probably means he's going to be kept around like the 30-minute mark, maybe a little less. So my interest in Wiggins definitely kind of depends on if he's starting or not. Um, but it is good to see that, you know, they said they were going to limit him to 20 to 25 minutes and he wound up playing w- more than that. That's at least good to see. That shows that he you know can, is capable of playing more minutes if he needs to. So Wiggins, we'll have to wait and see if Golden, who Golden State starts. But if Wiggins is back in the starting lineup, I definitely think he looks like a pretty solid option. And then again, Jordan Poole's questionable. We'll have to see if he plays here. I think Poole's going to be really low owned um, just because for one, he's questionable. And for two, he did not have that great of a game in game one of the series. But you know, Poole was pretty productive in the limited minutes he got, 22 minutes. Honestly, I, again, I can't remember if he like if he went to the locker room, had you know didn't return. He only played 22 minutes. I'm not sure if that was like expected um, or if that was like kind of the plan for Poole. Normally, Poole plays like you know kind of high 20s minutes. But now they do have Andrew Wiggins back. They just have another body they can give minutes to. And if they're going to prioritize defense against Fox and stuff, they're, they're going to want Wiggins out there. So I don't think Poole's minutes are as secure now that Wiggins is back. But I still think on a two-game slate, you could you could go to Jordan Poole at 5,700. Kevon Looney, you know, he did start, played 32 minutes last game, was pretty productive in that time. Looney's a guy that we've seen this season, like even when he starts, he's not guaranteed to play big minutes. Now, he did get 32 last game. I don't know if that happens again, though. Like we've seen plenty of games where, where Looney plays like 22, 24 minutes. You know, you kind of saw like in, in these games, so... I'd be a little skeptical on Looney, especially if he, if he gets a lot of ownership. But if he's a guy that you know not many people are going to go to, then I would definitely be fine taking a shot on him because Looney is a guy that can produce when he does get opportunity. I'm just a little bit skeptical on him because his minutes have not been secure as a starter. His minute ceiling, I guess, is not like super high. Like best case scenario, you get over 30 minutes. Most nights, though, I feel like Looney plays like 24, 25 minutes. Um, and then the rest of the Golden State guys, again, like DiVincenzo and Gary Payton, I think you're probably only considering these guys if you know Jordan Poole gets ruled out. DiVincenzo did start last game, even with Wiggins back, but he only played 20 minutes. I think his minutes are definitely gonna, not going to be as secure now that Wiggins is back, but yeah, we'll, we'll have to wait and see on Poole's status. Uh, Gary Payton, last game off the bench, played 20 minutes, was really productive, or you know, was kind of productive, had 19 DK points. These are guys you could definitely take shots on in large field GBPs, but the only way that I would consider playing them like in single entry or in like my main lineup would be you know, if uh, Jordan Poole got ruled out. Um, so I think that does it for Golden State. I think that's kind of everything I see here. Nothing else looks that appealing. So that'll do it for this you know, little two-game Monday slate, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, though. Appreciate you watching. Hope this video did help. Make sure you guys hit that like button down below. If you did enjoy, hit that subscribe button if you have not yet. Uh, be sure to go check out Prize Picks, sponsor of the video. You guys can sign up for Prize Picks. You can use my promo code, promo code NOAA. When you sign up, you'll get your first deposit matched up to $100. When you sign up for Prize Picks with my promo code, check them out. If you have not yet, again, use that code when you sign up so that way you do get your deposit bonus. Um, but I wish you guys the best of luck on this two-game slate. Appreciate you watching the video. Appreciate your support. As always, we will see you guys in the next one. Peace.